Hello, everyone, and welcome to Create a Casserole. Um, as you can see, we're here at the Niobrara County Extension Office in Lusk, Wyoming, and we're hoping to help you um, be able to create quick and easy and um, flavorful meals without much thought. So today we're going to talk about casseroles, and casseroles are a one dish meal that you cook in the oven and then serve in that same dish. So the world is wide open as to what you can put in your casserole. Casseroles are a really versatile way of cooking because you can mix and match um, different foods together to create um, numerous casseroles. So um, they are quick and easy to make, and so they are perfect for when your schedules are full. And with the starting of school, everybody seems to be on the run and doesn't have near as much time, maybe, as we've had the past few months to create those tasty, nutritious meals. It is also a great um, way to cook meals when the weather turns cool in the fall or in the dead of winter when it's freezing outside to bring that nice pipe, piping hot dish out of the oven and have a meal ready for your family. So, a casserole usually, and I say usually, has three components because it can have more or less. Usually it contains some sort of meat or fish or chicken, um, usually some sort of vegetable, usually some form of starch to help kind of bind your ingredients together, and oftentimes some sort of liquid to help create that boiling um, cooking in the oven. So some tips on um, making casseroles. Um, today the casserole we're making in our class, I am going to put in the refrigerator here once it is made, and I will take that home for supper tonight. I will then put it in the oven and bake it, and we'll have instant supper when I get home. Casseroles can also be made ahead of time, um, wrapped tightly with foil on the top and maybe slipped into a Ziploc bag and placed in your freezer. So on those busy days ahead when you know you're gonna have a crazy day at work or crazy day at school, you can take that casserole out of the freezer the night before, put it in your refrigerator and let it thaw overnight and then bake it when you get home. You can bake them from the frozen state, but it takes way lot longer and then you really have to be cognizant of what that internal temperature um, is. So, you can also make um, one recipe, like this is going to make a casserole big enough for this pan. So I could have actually done it in two eight by eight inch pans, ate one tonight for supper, put one in the freezer and brought it out in a month and had an instant meal. So there's lots of different things you can do with casseroles to fit your lifestyle and your family's likes and um, and your and your lifestyle of your family. So um, just remember, you can use your own imagination, your own creativity. You can substitute in a recipe. You can mix and match, as we've talked about before in. Um, canning classes, food preservation or canning is a science. Cooking is an art. So use your own flair when cooking and create something that you and your family enjoy. There's lots and lots of recipes on casseroles on Facebook, Pinterest, or in just good old-fashioned cookbooks. So browse, get your favorite little um, folder of favorite casserole recipes, and then you can learn to mix and match from there. The one thing with casseroles, some of the things we're using are pantry ingredients. So you can buy these ahead of time when they are on sale. 
and store them on your shelves. And then when you're ready to cook with them, you've um, got your ingredients all ready to go. So with that, today we're going to make one of our family's favorite casseroles called New Mexico Chili Bake. And this is a recipe I found in a magazine about 50 years ago. I adapted the recipe from the one that was in the magazine to fit um, then my parents and my tastes and my sisters. But it's been a favorite ever since I've been married and now have grown children and grandchildren. So we, we think you'll really like it. So I have started the hamburger browning. And if you're not sure how to brown hamburger, just put it in your skillet and start um, breaking it up. Make sure it's good and thawed. Put it in your skillet and then just turn the heat on and, and start cooking it. It will go from a bright pink color to a brown color. We um, butcher our own beef at home or have it butchered for us. Um, so we always have a stockpile of, free, of beef in the freezer. So that's usually what we cook with at our house. But you could use, if you have wild game hamburger, that will work just as well if you have deer or elk or whatever. So, while our hamburger is browning, we'll talk a little bit about the other ingredients in our recipe. Um, first, we're going to add some onions, and uh, we chop these ahead of time on, um, in our little chopping machine. And if you don't have one of those, a knife and a cutting board look, work just as well. But the trick with um, cooking or making casseroles of, or any kind of cooking, when you chop, you want to chop your vegetables into um, uniform size and shapes. That way they will cook evenly and they also just look prettier. So with our... Um, chopping machine. It has little grates that um, you just put the vegetables on and we have a fine grate and a larger grate and you just put your like quarter of an onion on there and you just pop it down and it'll chop just really really quickly and um, they sell these at most hardware stores, stores like Walmart, those kind of things. So if you're going to be doing lots of cooking, these are a really, really a good time saver. And they really aren't that expensive. So it may be something that you would like to invest in as you start to cook. Um, we also did green peppers yesterday. And if you would like, our family's not a really big green pepper family, but you sure could add these green peppers to this mixture um, to boost the vegetable intake. But we're not going to use those today. So as our hamburger browns and gets good and brown with the onions in there, This is a recipe that does not call for salt and pepper um, because the condensed soup that we are going to use is pretty high in sodium and we're going to get lots of flavor from the picante sauce or salsa. So you really don't need to add additional seasonings. If you decide that after you've tried it once that you want to add salt or pepper, you're sure free to do that. Okay, our hamburger is good and browned, and you don't want to get it really so crispy done. You just want it nice and um, the, all the pink gone, and, but not hard and crusty. 
since our beef is um, homegrown, and Aaron, you might want to bring it over, we absolutely have almost zero fat in this. But if you have store-bought um, hamburger, this will be, this is just kind of the meat juices. It's not grease you will probably want to drain that grease off before you go ahead and add your other ingredients to it. So in the recipe, it says we'll mix our next few ingredients in a bowl. Um, over 50 years, I've learned we really don't need that bowl. It's just one more bowl you're going to have to wash. So I always just take the next few ingredients and go ahead and mix them in our skillet. So then you only have one skillet to wash. I, I really do not like to wash dishes that much. So. so the next thing we are going to add is two cans of cream of chicken soup. Um, if you have someone in your family who cannot um, eat condensed soups because of allergies, there are some substitutions for cream of chicken or cream of celery soup. And if you need those substitutions, just give me a call or send us an email and, and we'll be sure to send those out to you. Um, you can substitute things like sour cream, but they actually make cream of chicken um, substitutes that have no MSG and um, none of the other ingredients that a lot of times people are allergic to. So we're going to use two cans of the soup. And then, unfortunately, that's the one drawback to cream soups is they do have MSG in them usually or some preservative, and they're very high in sodium. So that's why we haven't added other salt to our recipe. The next thing as our liquid, so we now have meat, we have our onions as our vegetable, and if we'd have put the green pepper in, we'd have had um, more vegetables. And for our liquid, we're going to add a can of evaporated milk. In a pinch, um, you can use just regular milk out of the carton. However, your consistency of the casserole and your richness won't quite be the same. So, and those of you who haven't seen condensed milk, it's kind of, it's not white, white like milk. And it's it's kind of, evaporated, I not mean, condensed. not condensed. I said that wrong. Evaporated milk. It's got kind of a caramely color because it has been um, canned at a high heat and it's um, a little more concentrated milk than just regular cow's milk. Then the next ingredient we're going to add is some picante sauce. And if you have other salsa that you like better, you can use chunky salsa, you can use mild, medium, really hot, whatever your family preference is. This is medium picante sauce. And it says three tablespoons. Um, usually I add about double that because we like it a little spicy and I also kind of go by the color. I kind of like it when it turns um, kind of pink color so um, that you'll have to experiment with at your house to see and that's about six tablespoons so we'll just finish the jar up. So now we want to stir this all together. And I have turned the burner off so it's not cooking anymore because we'll wait and let it cook in the oven. Now, as you can see, as we stir the picante sauce in, it um, is getting a little pinker in color. And you just want all the kind of lumps of soup to go away and be very smooth.
And it's hard to cook up on this, or to stir up on that burner. It's not very sturdy. Just make sure you have all your ingredients thoroughly combined. I'll get rid of these so we have some more room to work. You also need to remember probably whatever can, um, baking dish, um, make sure that you have probably sprayed it with some cooking spray so it does not stick to the bottom of your pan. Okay, so for our starch in our um, casserole today, we're going to use flour tortillas. The original recipe that I started from 50 years ago actually used soft corn tortillas. And I'm not a real corn tortilla fan, but if you are, they also, it would also make a great casserole and help bind everything together. So we're ripping the tortillas in kind of fourths. Um, you don't have to be really, really accurate. And then you start laying them in your casserole dish. You wanna cover the entire bottom of your casserole with tortilla quarters. And it doesn't matter if they overlap, you just want all of the bottom covered up. So the recipe says you'll use six tortillas. I usually plan on at least eight, if not a little more. And this is a great way to kind of use up, maybe if you have one, or two corn, uh, leftover tortillas. You can, before you start a new package, this is a great way because they soak up lots of the moisture and, and they aren't quite as dry. So once you have your whole bottom covered, you then start spooning in your meat mixture. You want to spoon in about half of the meat mixture. Make sure you have it all covered. And this is a 9 by 13 inch pan. So as we said, you could have made this in a two 8 by 8 inch baking dishes. If you also have some pretty um, casserole dishes and you're serving this at a party, you may want to use something a little more festive than a 9 by 13 inch pan. But that's, that's what size it will cover. Okay, once you get about half that meat mixture in, we're going to layer another layer of your tortilla quarters into the pan. And these are just regular um, taco-sized tortillas. If you had the little street taco size, It'll take more. If you have the bigger size, it would take less tortillas. We will be posting this recipe on the website, and we'll also be posting a um, bulletin from Utah State University Extension called Create a Casserole that gives you a lot of ideas of different combinations that you can try and um, create your own specialty creation. Last, we're going to top it with a half a pound, which is a, oh, wait, we forgot our other meat. So now just cover up your tortillas with the rest of the meat mixture. Kind of spread it out evenly because you want it to bake evenly. Okay, it's a good thing I have somebody here to keep me um, on tasks because sometimes I, my mind gets ahead of what I should be doing. So last, we're going to top it with um, eight ounces or two cups or a half a pound of cheese. The recipe says um, grated longhorn cheese. 
Um, I like to use the Mexican blend cheese because it kind of goes with the whole flavor of the dish. So just sprinkle this on. Um, I purchased already shredded cheese, um, but you can purchase block cheese and then shred it in your food processor. If you have one of those or just a, a regular sh shredder. So um, this is just easy for me when I get home from work. I can use the already shredded cheese and don't have to take that extra step in getting it shredded. And cheese is one thing that oftentimes goes on sale. So you could purchase several bags of it when it's on sale. It does freeze and then you can take it out and use it as, as you need it. And you want to make sure your cheese is evenly distributed over the top of your casserole dish. So this is just one really quick and easy way to have supper on the table and a very tasty way. Usually we serve it with some tortilla chips, some salsa, some corn, and you have a complete meal in just a matter of minutes. So I hope you enjoy making casseroles and we will see you the next time with some other quick and easy ways to cook.